Welcome back to our final game here at Kingston Park in Newcastle. The Inspire Sport Champion Schools Year 10 Boys Final. It's St Peter's Catholic High School of Wigan taking on Castleford Academy. Tell you what, I'm looking forward to this one. And uh, our match official for this one, the referee is Luke Favell. Touch judges Liam Breeny and Adam Smith. The in-goal judges are Logan Miles and Lucas Seal. Interchange official Jack Wallace. Once again, I'm joined by Tom Brindle. And Tom, this is what we've been waiting for, isn't it? As he's saving me from my team sheets again, being blown all over the place. Yeah, we've seen some fantastic skills, some fantastic rugby league and athleticism. And ultimately, when we get to this level at year 10s, they're almost fully mature so the intensity goes up another level um, and yeah I'm really looking forward to this one what to play for let's take you how both of these sides uh, line up starting with St Peter's Catholic High School they've got uh, Lincoln Gladwin in one Nick Hassan in two Tom Hazarden were in three Ben Platt in four Ronan Bradbury in five Max Lilly six Zach Bailicki in seven we're in eight is Shea O'Connor, nine Joe Hollins, ten Zach Brand, eleven Lewis Kennedy, twelve Tom Rowe, thirteen Ethan Smith. It's a bench that features Liam O'Reilly in fourteen, fifteen is Jack Myers, sixteen Lewis Gibson and seventeen is Joe Draper. And if we move over to Castleford Academy, they line up with uh, wearing one Taylor Sharp, two Alte Oslilek. 3 Jacob Longdon 4 Alfie Steele 5 Alfie Smith 6 Jacob Hardy 7 Brinley Bellwood then it's wearing uh, 9 Travis Morse 10 Robin Smith 11 Jaden Pollitt wearing 18 Will Mathers 13 is Reese Firth in 14 is Tommy Cowell 15 Will Jex 16 James Jackson 17 Bailey Spink and we're in number 12, Jack Egley. Pre-match is almost done. The nerves are jangly. This one for, uh, so as you know, is 30 minutes each way. And I'm looking forward to seeing the intensity of this one. The uh, year 10 finals have always lived up to, uh, always lived up to expectation, haven't they? Yeah, I mean, it's the, the, the penultimate game of the Champ Schools for this year. The, the remaining game is the Year 7 Boys Final at Wembley, which will be a fantastic occasion uh, later in the summer. Uh, and uh, what a way to finish. Exactly, yeah. Bedford High School have got through this year, um, which I, I know a couple of people involved there. So um, congratulations to them. And I think it's the first Lee School that's got through in quite some time, to be fair. Yeah, I do believe so. And ultimately, obviously, the, the mighty Leopards and knocking on the door so it could be a a, a wonderful occasion for the the town of lee uh, in august if they both get to the final one way to go between now and then spoken as a true later <laughs> so here come our match officials and our teams so castleford academy and mainly amber shirts we have St. Peter's Catholic High with the yellow flashes across the chest, mainly black. Two schools with a long history in champion schools. They value uh, what sport can do for their pupils and their school. And uh, again, both, both teaching institutions there do a great job to obviously nurture and bring through and put value into this and I know a lot of the players go on to do wonderful things and they value the time and the opportunities they have playing rugby league for our schools rugby league. St Peter's have got to this position by beating Trinity Academy 44-0, UTC of Cumbria 36-18 and then in the semi-final defeated Archbishop Sentamanu by 26 points to 6 for Castleford Academy they defeated Culture High 52 points to 6 Ridwan of Wales 26 points to 6 and Winfred Holtby 22 points to nil again we're talking about Castleford Academy not conceding many points no and 
I, I, with my uh, very long, extensive time, unfortunately, well, fortunately, unfortunately, again, I think Cass Academy is the most prolific, both boys and female schools in Champion School. So, yeah, it's another fantastic occasion and another opportunity for Cass to possibly perch themselves on top of the schools of the league again. So it's Castleford Academy who'll get us kicked off in this one. Half an hour each way, five minutes for half time. We're almost ready to get down to business. And how encouraging is this that all the schools have stopped and they're watching this final? Yeah, it's been a lovely sun kiss day. Uh, the weather's starting to cool a little bit, which I think will benefit this game because it was hot pit side earlier in the day. It's been an absolute pleasure to be down here once more at Kingston Park. I'll tell you what, there was two players at that restart offside for Castleford. Oh, they've come up with possession, but then it's been spilled. Great hit coming in there. What a, a super first hit by number four, Ben Platt. If that's a sign of things to come, I think we're going to be in for a physical encounter. Oh, well, there's the next tackle. You can tell we mean business. We're both stood up in the commentary position. Yeah, that first hit took us off our feet. <laughs> <laughs> tell you what, he's following up as well. Really forceful defence. Again, as you've identified, there's clearly a culture of understanding and putting a lot of effort into that defensive unit for Castleford because it's been consistent across all teams today. And moved into the middle as far as St. Peter's are concerned. The run comes in from Zach Brand. Doesn't gain that many metres forward thanks to the ferocity of the challenge. Forced to kick from deep. It's a good kick as well, though. Yeah, it's if a good, good clearing kick. And look at the chase on it as well. Superb running from Ronan Bradbury. Puts loads of pressure on and he forces the drop out. That is brilliant, brilliant play. That, yeah, I think the cast fullback got a little bit excited, possibly got a little bit too close to the defensive line. And a great clearing kick from St. Peter's and well backed up by his winger to get a result there with Pete set against the green. Taylor Sharp being a man caught out there, he tosses the ball to his standoff, Jacob Hardy. Ah, this is a drop out from the knee the sticks. Gets about 30, 35 metres on it. Bounces it, bobbles, it trickles. It's taken in by Max Lilly. Lilly, all held. Good defence there. Draw oh, again. There's there the you can see a bit of atmosphere come in. St. Peter's have been two coach loads of pupils to support and obviously encourage their team and it's uh, bringing a real liveness to this game, uh, cheering along their team. It's definitely a lively, intense opening. Crashing through now is Shea O'Connor. He plays it on the edge of the 20 metre line. Lovely dummy. And surge on from Joe Hollins. 10 metres out from the line. Last tackle reached here by St. Peter's. Ball switch left. Great place to turn the ball over. Yeah, well, I say, a little, I bet they were a little bit disappointed. I know it's early in the set and they wanted to do anything, but they didn't really add any strike to that. It was a little bit one up rugby. Um, so, yeah, just a little bit of a settler, but possibly missed an opportunity there, did St. Peter's. Here come Castleford Academy trying to clear their lines. They've reached 10 metres out from their own line in the first set. First carry, I should say. Fantastic line speed there from St. Peter's. Really trying to set a marker down with this defensive set. Well, it's obvious when you look at kind of like these Castleford Academy sides, you need to almost fight fire with fire against it, don't you? And be, be willing to up the ante in defence. Yeah, when you start getting to this level that, again, margins matter, getting quick play of the balls, having a disrupted defensive line matters because the, the fitness and speed of the defence means that it's really hard to try and create any space and try and get those uh, them breaks. Decent run by Reese Firth, a clearing kick comes in, it's going to be taken on the full by Bradbury. Bradbury launches the counter attack for St Peter's, shuffles between two defenders, makes some good kick return metres there. Lovely return. Bit of niggle there from the Cass Academy at nine. They didn't want to give any metres away, that's the thing. <laughs> How dare you make those metres on us? <laughs> Quick play of the ball. Nice work, it's physical. Tom Hazarden caught in the defensive then. Carries the ball over halfway. Pass under pressure. Collected in by Ben Platt. 
another big hit goes his way again fantastic limited them to roughly 20 meters so far in this uh, it's great work from Cass Academy Hardy's really tracking as well along that middle the half back came up with three tackles on the bounce then kick comes in from Zach Belecki up high into the night sky it's juggled Phew. Well, his heart was in his mouth then well we covered because that centre was coming on him hard they want a penalty as well too keen and eager to get down the ground with St Peter's to put the pressure on I remember St Peter's even years and years ago when I was at school being a really good rugby playing side so it's just continued hasn't it yeah well, it, sh it shows the commitment and value they put in the sport that they brought say a couple of coach loads of pupils to come and support this to get there to back their team and clearly the, the whole school gets behind the value of team sport particularly rugby which is fantastic cracking run forward by Will Mathers well met in defence <laughs> oh it's going to be a bruiser this one I can tell five minutes in people will be counting ribs tomorrow they won't be wanting to move from the bedrooms all day <laughs> Standard, isn't it, normally? <laughs> that's what they're saying for this, for this, for this, for this, for this your, your, your kids. They're looking to play a little bit wider of the rook, but again, it's excellent tracking on Reese first. Tries to get up and go again. But ben Platt really can hit hard the centre. He's involved again. Last tackle reached here. Castleford Academy moving the ball right. Kick to come in from Hardy. Oh, it's cleared the height of the stand there. Oh, it's the end of him missed. It's bounced. Offside is the call, though. There was a good two or three players that referee looked for Velcro Pitt from. Yeah, good call and well spotted there from the referee. All of the uh, all the, the all the defenders was in front of the kicker there, and maybe a little bit lucky there from uh, the St Peter's winger. They let that ball go, they slightly mistimed it, and uh, they managed to get away with it. Zach Bailecki finding touch about 10 metres further down the ground he almost took out one of the uh, floodlights as well in the stand so they fired that into this stand we're in now they'll bring it down the left offload under pressure drew the knock on against him as well so an error will go the way of Tom Rowe and that's what you get for good defence sometimes you, you, you hit hard like we've seen here you start to moving back and attackers get nervous and trying to offload the ball more often than not it doesn't end up being a good uh, move and uh, unfortunately a knock on there and Cass now back in uh, the driving seat with good position to try and see if they do anything here yeah I was going to say it puts them in a great position this doesn't it 40 metres away from the line in centre field are we going to see another fantastic scrum play? <laughs> well, the last game was uh, scrum plays galore, wasn't it? It's taken left. Delayed past there, looking for the running of Alfie Steele. Much more measured approach, looks like they're trying to build a set here rather than a single shot off a scrum. Looks a strong carry and equally strong tackle from Tom Hazardham that on Alte Oslik Oslik moves out to his wing position meanwhile ball is played it's in the middle played amongst the forwards Never a run across the line from Taylor Sharp so much support in the stands yeah they set, they set up for the long side shift there and the lead runner was a little bit overran a little bit didn't quite quite the disruption in the line as required and uh they mapped off quite well and that's it every tackle is being cheered there's a an injury stoppage here well, I say it's a big difference in a year um, Cass Academy instead of going for the move I say they look to set up a full set which is required because you have to move defenders put people out of position uh, just not quite executing as as they needed to but it's just that level of intelligence and nuances the staff building up to this level that requires people to score twice there's that crowd that we were talking about with the uh, St Peter's pupils that have come up to Newcastle to follow their classmates that's fantastic away support four <laughs> hours that. From, uh, from Wigan to get up here possibly longer on a course to be fair it's, out, it's outstanding so they're doing all the checks that they can on Max Lilly to make sure he can continue 
got to give you a little bit extra that you don't want to be going back to school on Monday knowing that your mates travelled 10 hours of work with not taking home the silverware. <laughs> he's back in position is Lily, which means we've got the game back underway beneath us. Nice link up from Castleford. They've got a bit of opening out wide. He couldn't move the ball there, could Taylor Sharp. It was good defence. It's forced an error too. And it's Fan turnover. Fantastic read from the, the the winger there. St. Peter's centre went for the kill, caught it a little bit wrong, but the uh, the winger knew his job and clear, closed down and saved his centre there and his fantastic defence. Almost ten minutes of the game gone. You can feel the tension. It's nil-nil. It's the closest game we've had so far. Ultimately, it's why these games need to be 30 minutes. You need to... That war of attrition needs to come into it. And fatigue ultimately needs to come into it as well. It's why we need to compete for 30 minutes each half to really get that game to the point where we're going to start seeing tries. Wow, what a run that is. Gains a good 20 metres on that carry. Gets... Find his front to Shea O'Connor been one of the standouts so far with the way he's run with such strength and vigour Platt following up to Peters still inside their own half kicking from deep by Leckie causing a bit of havoc for the winger it's bounced in favour of Nick Hassan Hassan skips past one I think he's wiped the saddle out here no it's still fifth it's still the last tackle so it's taken into the middle of the field well there's a running chance here for Bilecki he thinks quickly closed in front of him oh, he, he must have wiped the yeah. tackle count down here we go run from dummy half there Joe Hollins now Brand intricate little play back oh and a forceful hit there King Queen Jack we used to call that back in my day Ethan Smith he couldn't play his joker in that one Played off left. Good movement. It's great play, but the pass unfortunately just goes in behind. Then he puts it back in field, and Castleford Academy have really recovered well. Taylor Sharp picking up the pieces. Yeah, they, they created the space. It's just that last pass, just quite not where it needed to be. But again, good play from St. Peter's. They create the opportunity, but fantastic defence again from St. Uh, from Castleford Academy clearly something that they value above most else yeah they got really got the numbers in didn't they they looked like they were cut open for a couple of seconds though I know these two particularly these two teams have had quite a running battle over the years I'm not sure if as I would call it the King Queen Jack is going to pan out today I think they've been well used to that but I hope I'll get proven wrong for St Peter's point of view but I think Cass Academy are used to that and I think uh, it might not be an effective play for him today. And this is an early blow as well for St uh, Peter's because the hard-hitting centre Ben Platt is coming off with what looks like a bit of a... a bit of a shoulder issue. He's yeah, someone who puts all his weight into a tackle and he looks like he's been clutching his collarbone when he's been sat on the floor. Uh, hopefully it's just a stinger and it's nothing too serious, but yeah, someone who's not the biggest on the pitch, he definitely hits above his weight. Yeah, he's certainly impressed in the first 12 minutes of the game. Still nil-nil. Castleford Academy looking to take possession from this scrum, having had that one fired across their bows a little bit. Yeah, but they weathered the storm well, like they have done so far. And this, this is a team that knows how to play rugby. They're going to build in their sets, they're going to build across the game. Uh, and I don't think they're going to do anything too rash here. Taken down the left hand side from the scrum. Weaving their way out towards the 20. Play the ball will come in. <laughs> it didn't miss with that hit. Superb tackle from Lewis Kennedy. And that's a good hit as well. This time on Bailey Spink. Yeah, limited them to about 10 metres so far in three tackles. That's fantastic defence. There is a real intensity amongst this St. Peter's performance so far. Nice ball moving down this right-hand side, though. Results in Jack Egley getting wrapped up, but they've conceded a penalty here. That will relieve some pressure and mean that Castleford Academy will come down the ground at them. 
Yeah, not what you need that for St. Peter's. A fantastic defence. Just got a little bit excited there. Lifted his leg, put him above horizontal, and you can't do that. And he just puts Cass in a really strong position. Strong kick to touch as well. Gains about 20 metres down the ground. That they don't have to work for either. So, Travis Moss to tap the ball. Picks up the running of Jack Egley. Made up for it there, the six will add it. Good shot. Again, ambitious pass to the back line. Trying to release Taylor Sharp. Good movement. Steele once more. And that's just a sign of the differences and the nuances as the games get older. And they created the space, but the speed from the inside just meant there was no opportunities there. They have to create opportunities to score try and put people out of position. Running opportunity for Hardy. To the edge of the 20 metre line he goes. Play Dennis right hand side. Oh, they've worked the play, they've worked the speed, they've worked the place. Can it be finished? Super tackle there on London. Danger still hasn't gone away. Egley tries to step and then force his way over. So strong defence. Each tackle again being cheered by that huge crowd behind the post. Can they deny him? Well, they haven't. He's gone and scored. It's a superb finish in the end. Look at what it means as well to score a try in the champion schools final. Reese first the scorer. Castleford, I believe. All created by the centre on this right side. A lovely feint that got them close to the line and ultimately they just battered themselves over the line eventually, sending player and just ultimately just getting that ball down in the last minute. Almost 16 minutes gone. First try arrives and it goes the way of Castleford Academy. Hardy looking to convert from out wide. Which was fascinating, was... Castle, Castleford Academy's reaction to the St Peter's fans clearly been affected by it and just let a little bit of a piece of attention when they scored the try in front of them you've got to take the adulation you've got to wind crowds up to yeah. a certain extent yeah all, all in good faith all in good it well is, but it's all in good all but, in good but fun. clearly they've absorbed that extra pressure well they've taken it on knowledge to affect them and when they had the chance to release it they did so four points to nil in favour of Castleford Academy. It's not quite a respectful day. No, it's not. It's been so respectful all through the day. <laughs> oh, what a good kick that is. Flags are raised. Jacob Hardy has two points to his name. And more importantly, Castleford Academy have six to those. That's how you respond. Lovely, beautiful technique. Put the ball through the middle of the post. Quiet in the crowd. No words required. No words required at all. Zach Bailecki on the halfway line again for St. Peter's. Almost 18 minutes of the game gone. Sends it long. It's recovered well by Cass Academy. The tackle is a good one. Chasing forward. Again, doubling his efforts there. He's St. Peter's number 13, Ethan Smith. Working hard. They do so well to restrict the metres, don't they? Initially. Yeah, and look, in the build-up to that set, they were doing, again, fantastic job defensively. Play got a little bit carried away, give away the give away penalty. penalty. That's where it gets so important, doesn't it, to keep your discipline. Good pressure from St. Peter's, and the error goes the way of Alfie Smith. Now the dial turns the other way. St. Peter's got another opportunity to put some pressure onto Castleford Academy's uh, line here. Just six points to nearly remember that try a couple of minutes ago. All that separates these sides. A real defensive intensity about this game. It's good to see the intent. Oh, 
goes Shea O'Connor oh he's off down the right hand side look at him go inside the 20 super well, run that's livened up the crowd again challenged him though Annie. he keep on coming with the big defences like I'll show you well, of course the competition is sponsored by Inspire Sport and he certainly did his best to inspire his teammates there didn't he inside the 20 they need to get some quick play of the ball here the play of the ball's a little bit too slow well he's picked his way forward out of dummy half as Joe Hollins it's unlikely to score against a try a uh, defence this good if they haven't got a quick play of the ball under the belt oh they've let him go he has another opportunity does Zach Brand to go for the line eventually stopped oh and that's great defence again but he's oh. dived in from an offside position so it's going to be a penalty the weight of St Peter's the pressure continues yeah I think we got a little bit lucky there to get another set that set looked a little bit lost again the offload comes in Hollins finds his man wide Lily tries to do it all himself they need to be a bit more canny I feel manoeuvre this side around they go route one from dummy half yeah I repeat myself I think Castle Academy clearly value their defensive line and unit and I'm not sure oh I don't know where that's ended up I don't know that's a bit of a set of six who didn't play at the ball but again they get another set here and they've worked it and there's an opening and there's a try Ethan Smith touching down from that pass from Shea O'Connor look how much it means six points to four well it was clinical when it happened lovely little switch yeah so again doesn't need to be the fancy player just someone hitting hitting an all running an hard line however it comes you, you take it but I do feel they possibly got a little bit lucky there St Peter's but they, they've been playing well this game and again it puts the, the, like, the score likely to be level again tell you what keeps it really interesting for everyone watching on though doesn't it what entertainment this is a high quality game of rugby league so Zach Bailecki with the conversion attempt conversations being had by both sets of players and their relevant coaches Now it's Castleford Academy supporter to add a bit of noise, a bit of pressure to the kicker. Belecki's taking his time. I don't blame him. Starts his run up. Right footy kicker. Oh, oh he's converted six points each. Again, cool as a cool, cool, there you are, cool as a cucumber, dealt with the pressure superbly, put the ball straight through the middle of the sticks. What a lovely try that was from Ethan Smith. Converted by Bailecki, six points each. And we've still got seven minutes remaining of this first half. The culmination of an excellent day, this one. Oh, and he's took that so well too as Lewis Kennedy ended up taking the hit he's off again here he's inspirational Shea O'Connor battling his way forward he's really challenging Castleford Academy isn't he good work out of dummy half managing to keep the ball moving and there's the try scorer Ethan Smith Pop down on the halfway line. Now a bit of subtlety in the movement. Yeah, a little bit of movement. Get the Cass Academy line just to spread out a little bit. Give himself a little bit more space to run up. Rowe played the ball to Hollins. He sets off on a foray forward. 15 metres bought from him. I think it's the first time they've made more than 10 metres on a carry. Just buying a bit of, a bit of lateral movement to the player. Starting to spread that Cass Academy uh, uh, line out a little bit 
inside ball to Ethan Smith crashing forward to the 20 they're coming forward with far more interest now aren't they Zach Brand the latest player held up in front of the post last tackle in the set it's called from this left hand side good defence though they're going to be forced to turn over Lincoln Gladwin getting caught on the last tackle yeah ultimately when you've got an aggressive defensive line like you have with Cass Academy if you try and play too close to what you're playing to their hands ultimately St Peter's got the ball actual used the ball and it just spread it out a little bit creating more space between the defenders and they started to benefit from that a little bit if there is a positive to that though it's where they've turned the ball over isn't it they're just 10 metres away from the line yeah and look St Peter's defence has been outstanding as well it's a it's definitely a defensive game and they've been limited them to 10 20 metres as well so real chance real chance to put a marker down and try and get a ball back into good ball position again for St Peter's the quality close encounter between these two good challenge there on Reese Firth he'll stand and play on the 30 metre line it's off to the left hand side oh that's a strong tackle again excellent work from Tom Hazarden again 25 metres I think they limited him to there and kicking from inside their own 40 metre line it goes high it's hanging in the night sky taken well by Bilecki well it could have gone so badly wrong there did well to keep his concentration St Peter's forcing their way over the halfway line Hollins again scheming at dummy half taking a run in fact it's actually the substitute Jack Myers who's almost a spit of Hollins there's Hollins does likewise <laughs> yeah they look a little bit tired it seems here St Peter's they should have been excited they should have been getting up for that first time they've had the ball starting the 50 for a while and uh, the rest of the attack was just standing back on the heels a little bit happy for uh, some some effective but uh, not necessarily constructive uh, scoots there. so we've got uh, an injury stoppage here um, do you think this will favour St Peter's then a little bit more possibly I think look, obviously they're both two very fit teams and I think they will cover quite well but yeah they should have been getting excited that was a chance to really try and put the and turn the screw there a little bit and they were just stood on their heels waiting possibly for someone to tell them what to do so uh, possibly an opportunity missed there Jaden Pollock back on his feet for Castleford Academy still six points each here as the clock ticks towards half time still three minutes and Shea O'Connor barreling his way forward yet again to get inside the 20 yeah his post contact meters have been fantastic so far last tackle here kick comes in oh. just bounces and bottles and goes dead yeah slightly unlucky there great kick into the pocket in between the winger and the fullback and just trying to make a decision luckily for them they let the ball bounce and it go dead but a fantastically placed kick which will show pay dividends if you get the chance to do it again the margins are so tight between both of these sides they're well matched aren't they yeah, that's, that's why we love the sport, that's why we love games like this, that the margins are so tight, it's moments, it's a little bit of inspiration, a little bit of magic that makes the difference. Sometimes it's a call, sometimes it's a bounce of a ball, but that's what makes it exciting because it's unpredictable. Definitely unpredictable. Six points each in this one, 27 and a half minutes gone. Hope you're enjoying the coverage as much as we've enjoyed bringing you the Inspire Sport Champion Schools Finals Day here from uh, Newcastle. Kingston Park an excellent setting oh I thought he'd worked his way through then for a minute Brinley at Bellwood sold a couple of uh, shimmies forward didn't they and both teams clearly have a lot of rugby league experience because the systems and structures to stay together as a defensive unit has been fantastic so far and nothing's really phased them now it's been brought down this right side good defence they recovered well there the hit came in from Jack Myers and some kick pressure coming in eventually Hardy gets his kick away it's bouncing oh that needs to be taken and he's taken instead by Castleford Academy but some good defensive pressure in the end from Lincoln Gladwin we'll see that try wiped off Fair play to the six of Castleford uh, Academy there. Under pressure, managed to put a spiral bomb up that caused some confusion that almost got his team a try, but last deft effort from the, the defender there just to put himself in the line and put the force the error. That's all five margins we were talking about, that, isn't it? 
Yeah, that ball goes half a, half a, half a, probably a couple of centimetres the other way and it's play on and it's a try. Oh, that's a powerful tackle. Picked up and dumped back. Firth working well with his half-back partner, Hardy. Little offload comes in. St. Peter's down the ground through Bailecki. He's had a few offloads so far. The 10, it could be the key to unlocking Casford Academy because uh, they seem to be lively when they do get that offload, St. Peter's. Max Lilly rides the initial challenge. Eventually disappears underneath two players just before the halfway line. There's a try scorer for them, Ethan Smith. They've got him on the right if they want to. The numbers, they're not renumbered really up. And that's where they send the ball. Kick comes in from Bailecki. He's gone for a deep one. Will that hold up in the in-goal area? Oh, oh, he's taking the kick. He could have let that one roll, to be fair. Yeah, he looks like he got nervous there. Beautifully weighted kick, though. Great kick chase. They obviously put the pressure on the winger. Wow, some great work there. I think that's the first time I've seen Cass where the numbers have been wrong so far in this game. With um, that close to half-time, you could have been a call to possibly have a shot at him, though. Definitely. Six points each at the break. Wow, what a close score this one is. What a quality encounter. Two evenly matched sides. I don't envy your job in picking a player of the match on this one. I don't think anyone's been stand out. There's been a number of good performances so far. I'm liking the six for Castlewood Academy. He's organising well. He seems to be a leader in the team. Uh, but the nine also for St. Peter's has been jumping out and seeming to be taking the lead there. And obviously we can't affect our, our top forward friend for St. Peter's who is a battering ram at the Roman and is really leading from the front. So six points each here at half time. Join us in a few minutes time for the second half. What's going to happen? Nobody knows. That's the beauty. So welcome back to what should be another enthralling half of rugby league here. It's St. Peter's Catholic High, six points, Castleford Academy six in this uh, year 10 final. Wow, what an intense first half we saw. And Tom Brindle, I think we're just going to get more of the same, aren't we? Yeah, as always, we expect this game to start open a little bit, a little bit more. They've had 30 minutes under the legs uh, and they'll start to tire a bit quicker. But so far, very evenly matched teams. Oh, what a hit. That is to start off again. Nick Hassan throwing everything into the challenge for St. Peter's. Certainly puts Castleford Academy in a spot at the start of this second half. 
really challenging them to bring it out from their own end and in Lovely three tackles carry. they've made two metres great carry though opening up the defensive line though with a little bit more width from the ruck and as a result they do make a few more metres off the back of it using the ball right Hardy finding his runner just wide good tackling though Superb start to the half from St. Peter's. That's a good kick from Hardy, though. Under pressure. Yeah, quality player, Hardy. Under pressure. Still got his kick away. And got a good kick away. Hassan with the pick up and kick return. Gaining a few metres off the back of that. Moving the ball right. Thinking we full back Gladwin. Gladwin to play it. This is Hazarden nice to see him in attack because we've talked about nothing but his strong defensive efforts so far in the game yeah they look a little bit flat here Cass Academy the defensive line it's a couple of times they've been caught on the heels uh, effectively the ball already coming at them by the time they're on the line so interesting start to the, the, the half so far for them Hollings moving the ball to Lily who in turn found the big figure of Shea O'Connor this time the defence dealt with him kick comes in from Dynecki on the last tackle Bouncing and bobbles into the end goal area. There's work to do here for Taylor Sharp. Does it well. Confident return. But he's in the corner again. And Castleford Academy coming back ever so slow. Good tackle on Alte Oslik. Yeah, they seem a bit lethargic coming off the, the second half. They need someone to inspire him here. Otherwise, it's going to be a tough 10 minutes. Good defence, Lewis Kennedy in that one. superb defence they're just not stopping at the moment they've started this half with a real statement of intent it's juggled but eventually well held by Jacob Longdon on the edge of his own 20 they've gone through a full set and haven't cleared their own 20 metre line they will do now through the kick it goes down in the ground another good kick as well to be fair Lincoln Gladwin though will pick up inside his own 40 he's returning it with interest he's got beyond halfway it's been a super start to this second half as far as St. Peter's are concerned. Almost three minutes in. Yes. This is the moments where you need someone to step up for your team. Castle Academy feel like they need that inspiration at the moment. A little bit heavy legged. They just need someone to step up and just drive their team forward. Well, they're finding the meters easier to come by. Ethan Smith with his latest carry played off the back, down this right side by Necky into the arms of Hazarden just dummy was looking for his winger and his winger was stood back unfortunately Hollins to be Nicky now Lily Lily ducking back to the right he's done well there stopped five metres out from the line last tackle signalled here Hollins with a raid Hollins darting forward Hollins with a try so alert from the hooker and the stand has erupted as St. Peter's have come up with the try to take the lead. Yes. Ten points to six. They've been lively all game from the nine. Clearly very smart player. Recognise a little bit of confusion with moving back to the mark. He played to the whistle, jumped out and got a lovely try there. Well, I think it's this... Uh, there's a couple of players that weren't quite set from a uh, Castleford Academy point of view, particularly James Jackson. He was caught on his heels a bit. He was complaining about something that happened in the previous tackle. Yeah, it, it, it looked like he was. He moved a little bit off his mark. The referee told him to get back there and he played it. And again, ultimately it doesn't matter. These things happen, but what does matter, Holland reacted faster than anyone else. And he's got his just rewards just in front of his rest of his school, it seems. Yeah, very good try there from Joe Hollins following his teammate Ethan Smith to the try line and they've got the front with Zach Berlecki to try and convert from this right side of the pitch well it's no more than the start to the second half has deserved to be honest with St Peter's they've been phenomenal yeah we've got to see reaction from Castleford Academy uh, arguably I thought the, the slightly better team when it was hard to call in the first half but just come out a little bit flat just seemed the intensity isn't there they're not getting back into the line the same um, yeah and it's, it's, it's cost them a little bit because they've 
they've not managed to meet St Peter's enthusiasm and intent and as such they put themselves under pressure with a, a couple of uh, attacking sets on their line and they've come away with a, a try here and in Castleford Academy need to do something by Lecky takes those little steps up oh he skewed that one so we won't add to the scoreline on this occasion 10 points to 6 is how it remains and we just see how smart he is out of dummy half works his way into the opening celebrates in front of half of his school just seconds away from restarting this game Hardy who will ultimately come to a look to put the kick off here he's been the man I feel who's been the leader for Castleford Academy in the first half and uh, he has to I think he has to drive his team forward here he has to inspire him looks a tidy player sends the kick high and long oh what a take that is he's inside his own in goal area he's looking around he's throwing a dummy as Bailecki he started a little counter attack fantastic take encouraging player there from the halfback but can they escape this area of the field they're under a bit of pressure now it's that brand with the carry that's better from Castleford Hollins moves it into the centre of the field good tracking tackle there from Jaden Pollitt mentioned him a couple of times in commentary and Liam O'Reilly will play it by Leckett hands the ball wide Shea O'Connor seems to have a freedom of movement he's just going to pop up where he wants to yeah you don't normally see a top forward in the uh, on the wing but again Castleford stepped up that set handled that, him well that's a great kick it's cleaned up it's offloaded at the back and then turned over but they're just challenging Castleford Academy with everything yeah again that bounce of the ball goes your way or doesn't go your way well scrambled from Castleford and they start with a, a good field position here certainly went in the way of Ronan Bradbury but he just couldn't get the offload but what an inspired tackle that is from Hollins a rib tickler oh move left first good job they went left there there was a few excited uh, defenders on that left side of St Peter's and it's moved into the middle Bellow picking up the running of Robin Smith He'll play just his side of the halfway line. Last tackle signalled. So when you consider where they turn the ball kick. over, what a kick that is! It's oh. Tester. Oh, that he got no chance of catching that one. I don't think any fullback in the world would have a chance of catching that. That's a super kick, but just goes dead in the end. Unlucky the again Hardy seems to be the one pulling the strings for Castleford Academy. Put a beautiful kick up. Uh, fortunate not to get a result though tapped on the 20 and carried back into battle by Nick Hassan St Peter's lead by 10 points to 6 8 minutes of the second half gone that was it. final game of the afternoon into the evening what entertaining rugby we've seen as well some tremendous stuff by Lecky firing the ball wide he was never really on that one I don't think he was right around his ears yeah, again, they've, they've stepped up to play before. Big hit from the forward from Castleford Academy. And they're now starting to build into this game after, like I say, a little, a little, little move away from their standards, I would say, for the first five minutes of the half. But they're now starting to get back into it. And it's going to be a scrum just uh, 10 metres in from touch. I've been that used to seeing teams go into the centre for scrums. It's quite nice seeing one on the touchline and see what they might come up with because you can lay your full back line out, can't you? Yeah, first time we've seen the opportunity, they, they look to construct a set. Didn't quite pan out for them, but it looks like they might be going for something here. Let's see what eventuates. Well, they wind it up for the run of Jacob Longdon. The look at the way they peeled off and gone down the right side. That's where the ball will go on this occasion now. Hardy. Oh, it's well worked. Good tackling, though. Just keeping Castleford Academy away from the line. And again, what well, Castleford Academy with that scrum play looked to get around the outside. So Lord of St. Peter's defender had to get around the other side of the rook. The well disciplined, so they did. There it's sent down the left hand side. Tackle comes in. 
this time on Altier Altier that's a physical challenge headed in on Pollitt Eric's moved into the middle kick comes in from Hardy oh it's gone high it's gone long bouncing and bobbling he's going to be touched down is it there was a hand in there from Castleford I think that was a knock on referee will go across to check with touch judge well, we're, there's a knock on we're much further away but I think first movement went backwards from Castleford but then there was a second hand in that pushed it forward well it's no try it's, going by the way. it's no try and it's uh, 15 metres out from the line Peters back in possession driving forward strongly to the 20 and through the hands of Bailecki and to Shea O'Connor again great post contact meters he's a real handful isn't he yeah you know, if you've got a forward that gives you post contact meters it means you have to work harder to put them down it means you have to move and then move back again as a defensive line and ultimately you normally get a quick play of the ball so yeah it's done a fantastic job for his team so far they've got two because it makes the next carry easy doesn't it for Smith he can make more meters as well off the back of it yeah I mean, it, it just it starts with momentum it just puts a little bit more disruption into that defensive line which normally means you get more meters and as we know it's a territory game the more meters have more opportunities in the second half in their half the attacking half the more chance you get to score Sharp does pretty well on the kick return then the fall follow up tackle on Alfie Smith he's a real challenger but they're not relenting the St Peter's defence no they're keeping up the pressure aren't they set after set tackle after tackle they're knocking heads back oh first with the offload will that open something up they're certainly heading the ball down the right hand side Egley finding support Whoa, back on the infield what a, ball. what a pass what a run Hardy. what a try this will be Hardy to the post what a response 10 points each kick to come and the try directly under the sticks threaded a needle threaded the needle there that winger in between two closing St. Peter's defenders to get it back inside to Hardy outstanding rugby league and Jacob Longdon as well with the pass back on the inside absolute quality it's that man Hardy who ultimately gets over the line Eggley causing the problems first of all such great reaction from Longdon back on the inside and he was streaming down the field at full pace was Jacob Hardy does what good instinctive rugby players does they follow the ball and they recognise opportunities to score and when they do they manage to turn up and get there Richie Mile has made a career of being that person with the instinctive player they turn up at the right place Hardy showed that instinct there I can think of a few players in time as well Ryan Briley's another good example at Salford isn't he yeah he was doing all those players there was another good West Orton Lardy was another person who was coming to mind again made a career of being at the right place with good instinctive rugby and ultimately he finishes them more often than not and even Danny Maguire uh, people think of him later on in these days as being very creative but he made his name on the back of supporting everything that came Leeds way didn't he yeah definitely and again it's, it's just intent it's just willingness and again it's that lovely knowledge he clearly has been around the game and he understands and he recognised and he was there where he needed to be brilliant from Hardy he's got this opportunity to put Castleford Academy back in front taking all the time that he can knows this one is so important and strikes the conversion as well so Castleford Academy now lead by 12 points to 10 in this year 10 final what quality yeah. this is lovely recognition there from the, the second row thread that needle poetry in motion from a rugby league point of view that one Castleford Academy 12 St Peter's 10 oh don't take your eyes off this one it's sent long from the restart it's allowed to bounce and trickle Hassan was after his man managed to get enough on him to just slow the uh, player down it was Bailey Spink who got caught for Castleford Academy 
And again, a feature of because Castleford Academy are starting to get wise to the tight defence of St. Peter's. They're starting to play a little bit wider. St. Peter's are reacting there. Defence was nowhere near as tight, which means I, I, I suspect Castleford Academy will get many more metres on this. Those smart moves is trying to manipulate the teams as they go forward. Starting to get some dividends for Castleford Academy here. Set and as we see that, they get a break. Yeah, uh, set restart as well, handed the way of Castleford Academy. So they'll get another opportunity to stream their way downfield as the momentum just shifted in this game again that's why I love the league also. oh the errors come in commentators curse and I, there's two examples of why I love the game of the league it's the, the smart to be able to be on and be, react and try and create oppositions to do things in your favour and then there's the big hits the opportunities to kind of put yourself out there and make a big impact for your team and cause an error like we just did there 14 minutes remaining don't go anywhere 12 points to 10 in favour of Castleford Academy. St. Peter's, though, to take possession from the scrum. Or will we see one of those rugby league rarities or a push against the feed? It's not looking likely. No, but we might see, we might see another scrum player. <laughs> it's taken right by Lecky. Dummies. Then shifts the ball on to Lincoln Gladwin. Good good defence there from Castleford yeah, wasn't sharp, phased Sharp tracked his opposite number all the way there just moved as a unit oh yep. felt that hit now we're seeing a bit of energy from the Castleford Academy getting off the line putting the bodies back on there Zach Brand going facing up to his opposite number didn't like that challenge and it's been put down by St Peter's Hardy picking it up referee just stopping the game saw there was a confrontation between the two players wants a quick word oh. ended in a hug which is nice all forgiven <laughs> till the next time he carries the ball is it <laughs> yeah, definitely but do it legally <laughs> hey fair play to Taylor Sharp though because I mean he led that defensive effort yeah it looks like this I think this has got to be Academy's uh, Castleford Academy's ball uh, possibly not the right time and or place to try and force the player there from uh, St Peter's you can still put some pressure on here can St Peter's because of the position on the field and challenges like that coming in very physical from Brand helping him out was Lewis Gibson ball moves across the middle yeah and a little bit more width off the player just moving the St Peter's defence around trying to counter out that strong defensive line Jordan Smith is the last carry they're trying to work the overlap and they have done running chance here the pass team forward well I think he's a little bit unfortunate with that to be honest he's also like uh, from my, my from my from my viewpoint I thought that was forward to be honest it's always tough with momentum rule but generally if you pass the ball and you get tackled right off it makes it look worse um, but yeah I thought that went forward it was a great tackle having said that stoppage here just while both sides get themselves organised also as well Brinley Bellwood was slow to get in position they've taken it from the base of the scrum referee not too happy wants it to be taken again so Zach Bilecki has another opportunity to launch an attack with Joe Hollins sent left Lily Rise the challenge, a clash of the two number sixes. I think you can say Hardy's won that one. Good hit there, Hardy. Still 12 points to 10. Brand trying to inspire his side. Still in half decent field position here, St. Peter's by Lecky. Takes it right into the line. Are we going to see Shea with a ball here? He's gone a little bit quiet so far for the last 10 minutes. Gibson. They need a barnstorming run. Sends it right, the ball bypasses him. Instead, it's a quick play of the ball. Tom Hazarden. It's a long carrier, though. No options. No one running with him. Last tackle. Here's no, Shea O'Connor. Here he is. He's skipping oh. towards the post. They put everything on him that they could. Robin Smith. Well done there, son. 
did so well, didn't he? Yeah, I think he was expecting a, a, a more of a collision, put too much energy, and I think he uh, lost his own foot in there. So it's a turnover. Can they force an error, though, St. Peter's? They still trail by two points. We're ten minutes away from full time. If they can weather this storm, they'll have done ever so well, and that'll help because they've won a penalty. Offside is the call against two or three defenders there from St. Peter's persuasion. Yeah, they've been a bit excited and jumped the gun a few times, but luckily for St. Peter's, the ball's not gone that way. There was no, no chance for the referee he had to call it there. Hardy with a very composed kick to touch. Sends his team 20 metres down the ground. It's a real cat and mouse game, this one speed of line as well excellent it's unrelenting I'm tight of just watching it and as we head into the last 10 minutes and St Peter's are starting to chase desperation starts to come in play oh and the penalty this time has gone against Castleford Academy Jaden Pollitt penalised for pushing out at the tacklers by Leckett wanting to kick to touch and get on with play quickly fires it down the ground and again at risk of repeating myself they're in decent field position here yeah they've not only capitalised really on the, the field position they've had so far so they need to make they mean need to make something work for them here Ethan Smith forced backwards in his challenge good work from Steele ball's gone loose there's a penalty head in the way of St Peter's they're starting to argue a little bit with the match official it's never good when that sort of stuff happens and they're going to go for goal here and ultimately it's one of those situations where the ball comes out in an unusual manner slightly faster than expected the referee has to make a decision more often than not he's going to call a rip of the ball there just because the unusual way it tends to come out so look there's been a bit scrappy the last five minutes but ultimately I think the referee has been forced into making some of these decisions both teams just got to compose themselves and I think the team that does that the best will probably come away with the spoils at the end of this game there's some frustration in this St Peter's ranks I've noticed by like he pointed to the post and then said time out I, want, I need a bit of time we need a bit of water on we need a couple of messages on yeah, ultimately though the referee after a certain period of time should be calling uh, to stop the clock so making sure they get maximum minutes or maximum fair minutes within uh, this game um, and yeah I think both teams are starting to get a little bit tense that desperation they're starting to niggle with each other they're starting to niggle with the opposition and again I'll, I'll say it again I think the team that manages their emotions better I think will the one that will come out the spoils because there's, there's five to eight minutes left in this game and fatigue is starting to set in and yeah, those moments are going to matter and especially in these age groups as players get themselves you know a little bit older and as we said about the testosterone etc it's a real challenge isn't it and there is something in the managing of all that yeah it's hard like they, they get to that point where the the body's being pumped with a, a drug that builds and makes them stronger makes them aggressive and when it comes to the floor it's hard to manage it's a bye lucky can he get this one on target Gonna take a long run up to the ball. Starts his process, sends it long, sends it wide. It's not gone dead either. Running chance here for Castleford Academy. Has he gone too early with the kick to goal? I think that plays into Castleford Academy's hands. I think that as well because yep. now he'll be thinking, I've done that wrong. I've now hit two incorrectly if you like and they're giving away a penalty so it's compound errors isn't it all the time someone just needs to get grab hold of this game just complete to the set get back to the end of the kick kick it deep and go on defending do you feel that man's going to be Jacob Hardy he seems to have a good head on his shoulders so far he certainly does very composed he finds a decent touch as well okay it bounced into touch <laughs> but they're all good they're all good kicks if they find the touch line yeah Look, a little bit risky, but look at the distance he's managed to get on that kick. He's put him into a, an opportunity to finish this game here. Oh, they're only 40 metres away from the line. Eggley throws himself at the uh, defensive duties. He was just up to the task. Hardy, long ball. Bellwood keeps it moving. There's the fullback. Sharp skips one challenge, flicks the ball out. It was never on that pass. 
and it's real the knock on just needed to keep hold of the ball there to get to back of the kick put St Peter's in a corner and make them go 100 metres ah oh, they've went 100 miles an hour and they didn't need to on the first play I reckon we've got about two sets each if the clock's right on the screen um, so two sets to kind of make or break your uh, evening this uh, tonight yeah, you're just putting more pressure on these kids now. <laughs> St. Peter's, they need to get down the other end of the ground. There's Lily, tries to step the defence, good tackle. Again, well met by Hardy. Lewis Gibson, plays out a dummy half. Just want you thinking about your player of the match, to be honest. If that's okay, Tom. Yeah. It's a difficult one. With yeah. the game poised as it is, it is by Lecky. I think there's a moment or two left in this game yet, so I want to see how it plays out a little bit closer to the final whistle. Playing into the middle. It's Hollins. He's been very good. Yeah, he's been solid. He's been possibly the person who's taken most command for the St. Peter's team, and I think he's done a fantastic job. Gibson. Oh, it's Shea O'Connor. The stop the moment. In the barricades out wide. What a hit. Superb from Sharp. He's done ever so well there uh, to put Ethan Smith down. And then there's a knock on and a turnover. There's all kinds of issues in the background involving young Jaden Pollitt, though, for the uh, Castlefield Academy. He stayed down after trying to turn and do the tackling duties. Again, speaking of moments, that was possibly one of them. Big oh. shit, like he's done all day barnstorming run tried to do something for his team managed to get the offload away but fantastic cover defence from Castleford Academy again it was an amazing tackle by Taylor Sharp oh this kid's in all kinds of issues though he's Pollitt yeah unfortunately Shea might have left uh, someone in his way which is what you don't know no, never nice to see got the doctor on just off screen at the back there's, there's that the support test. they've been brilliant haven't they yeah three coaches wow that's commitment again it's even at the super league level even at the elite level moments like this where there's a pause intense games tend to get the better of them what we often see in this situation there will be a, a forced play or a knock-on and if that's the case ultimately that will play into St Peter's and so Castleford Academy needs to be smart here just completely set not overthink it which pauses like this gives you a chance to do well nobody likes to see this there is going to be some attention shown here they need to get him off the field There's the uh, young substitute wanting to get on the field. Meanwhile, the look on the grounded player, Jaden Pollitt, who's had a, a real involved game this evening. And one of the leaders for Castle for regards to moving that line forward, always been on the front foot, and his defence has been fantastic. Oh, his defence has been superb, to be fair. game will be paused for some time here and here they bring the stretcher well nobody likes to see a stretcher emerge in a rugby league game remains 12 points to 10 in Castleford Academy's uh, favour oh 
the oxygen has come out for the young lad. such good hands thanks to the medical staff that are now available when um, when the game finally does get restarted there's going to be three minutes left of this three game three minutes so don't don't watch what's on the screen three minutes set your own clock because it's going to be a fantastic three minutes so a culmination of a fantastic day uh, and possibly the game of the day so far yeah, what a game this one has been. It's had a bit of everything, hasn't it, to be fair. There's been such tough defence, some classic rugby league tries. Well, obviously, I'm a little bit excited because it's a great game, but this, in my opinion, has been up there, and this is what we expect from Origin-type games. Physical games, people putting themselves on the edge, uh, and it's, it's that level of competition, war of attrition, and hopefully we'll see some another moment here in the last few minutes. We've definitely seen a, a really, really well contested game of rugby league. And this is what this is what your word does, Tom. You've mentioned it, the clock's been reset. The power. The power you've got power. <laughs> that, no, that's never been said before. <laughs> As we've obviously got a slightly extended break, it's, it's great to see the rugby league fraternity come back down and support the school. So uh, we've got Lacey Owen here with uh, Castleford Academy. He's a current York Valkyrie player and I believe recently been called into uh, the England squad again and obviously ex transferring that expertise to the players. Uh, and I know that's across the board, across all these teams. So it's, it's fantastic that... That we get to, they get the players, the schools get to engage and work with the, that quality of player. So we're going to show you the tries that have been scored so far in this second half. This was the first, and this came after such an intense opening, as far as St Peter's were concerned. Uh, Joe Hollins being the man that was really ever alert at dummy half here. Yeah, and it, like I say that was that little pause. He looked like he, he wanted to carry on playing. The referee told him to stop. And that little momentum, that little moment of confusion, he capitalised on it. Some of the other nine for the St Peter's. And this, a quality carry from Jack Egley. A lovely offload. And what a pass from London back inside to a flying Jacob Hardy. Yeah, the margins on that was tiny. Again, I said it before, but he really did thread the needle. It was a... There was a lot of risk in that play and he pulled it off excellently. I think my voice moved up about three octaves as well, to be honest. It was outstanding rugby league football. And again, I know we've given quite a lot of praise because it's a composed nature, but again, go back to that point. Real rugby league instinct. Knew where he needed to be, turn up at the right time. And they're the moments to get you the tries that potentially win your champ schools finals and also carried the ball around under the post as well to make his conversion uh, an important one which sets the scoreline as it is at the moment 12 10 in castleford academy's favor for those who've been with us like you have dave for the last six hours or so and our opening game we talked about how important kicks have been in champ schools finals in the past how steve mccormack i remember famously was involved in a kick in the dying minutes for his still Evan and smiths to get a win uh, down in richmond and we could be there again split by a, a, a conversion we certainly could i wonder if anyone has done the full six or so i was like and, and listen to your fantastic voice uh, well i hope so i hope i've kept people entertained and interested we've certainly done our best and uh, the players have not disappointed on io2 we've seen some excellent rugby league contests and every final has been different and that's the beauty of coming covering this event because you see the progression you see the margins close but you also see as well certain players really step up and excel in their own age groups yeah and and, and, and I, I completely agree and i think for me the fascination bit around possibly the, the difference in 
type of game we're watching it this year, tennis, that they've started to reach a level of maturity where there's some consistency. And we've seen some fantastic players like the game before, but there was clearly an element of physicality that helped him. And it's one of those things that we know there is a difference in physicality. And sometimes that can be a, a hindrance that means you don't get to shine uh, at that point. But stick with it because there's some fantastic players come through as a late developer. That's what our sport's about. That is such a good sign that Pollitt is being assisted without the need of a stretcher so it's almost off the field now during that pause Castleford haven't had the ball in their hand they've been stood still they've been thinking about it I hope for their sake could they overthink it that's, that's what tends to happen I hope they complete this set but again tends to happen we tend to see a mistake or someone overplaying this motion by Nicky with the tackle helped out there as well by Tom Hazarden St Peter's pushing there lucky not to get a penalty they're defending with such great intensity moved in field they've literally gone 10 metres in three tackles now trying to open the field out a little bit with a kick oh it's oh, a wide smart. kick that's so smart that's a great kick and it's bounced oh, up perfectly oh. here's London London to finish it off for Castleman Academy he's flying down the ground no one's stopping him that was genius from Hardy and what a score from London ignore me clearly I don't know what I'm on about the exact opposite they clearly thought about it they had intent and they knew what they were going to do and superb execution from Hardy they're kicking on four beautifully weighted and what a way to finish this game what a kick what a bounce what a chase what a try oh, he's not been given oh it's not given he's not Whoa. given Could offside is the call is it yeah it must have been called offside we all got excited hang on the penalty has been given on the 40 meter line what's happened here There's been, has there been a little bit of obstruction in the background oh there's yet more twists and turn in this game it's still 12-10 I was getting ever excited <laughs> that was a highlights reel that never will be seen again yeah <laughs> confusion reigns but been given a lifeline here St Peter's so can St Peter's get themselves down the ground can they come up with the enough constructive rugby league in the next minute and a half one minute one set six tackles Hollins superb run at the start been a fantastic player so far today well game's over but he's been fantastic today Hollins Tyler Key trying to put the step on Is there yet something else Big to do? Shea. Handled him well there. It's a superb tackle on Shea O'Connor. We're in a good position for a left-hand shift here. Into the last minute. And they go short. They do go short. And he's flying down the ground. Absolutely flying for the corner there. Ethan Smith already has one try to his name. Ball moved in field. Now Shea O'Connor gets past one, oh, slips the oh, ball, open. they've got an overlap, can they finish it? They're going into the corner, what a finish, what a try, is this going to be given? They're celebrating like it is so, it is given, Lincoln Gladwin has the score, St Peter's, have they got the victory? It's 14 points to 12, kick to come, the scenes of pandemonium <laughs> at the end here as the St. Peter's supporters head to embrace their charges, embrace their heroes. What crowd, a score. Crowd has gone wild. Lincoln Gladwin, brilliant try at the corner. I know they made him work for it because there was a lot of ground to cover and he had to get right in that corner. They made him work for that try. Oh, what? I don't know. I don't know where to go now. <laughs> neither, neither do the spectators. They're getting back <laughs> into position. They know there's a kick to come. Um, I know we've still got to get a player of the match. No, that's a, <laughs> <laughs> if we're going for a player of the match, ultimately I'm going to give the player of the match to Hardy. We talk about moments. We talk about margins. I think he's had his head on his shoulders throughout this whole game. The best and that kick under the pressure that was the try that never was I think it I think it deserves it 
the yard either way I think that's the game they go away champions so yeah I still think Hardy's play with the match for me that looks like it's time they are taking stuff onto the pitch so it looks like this is full time whistle the last moment of champion schools finals 2023 and what a way to finish what a way to finish and it's almost written for him to convert from the touchline as well isn't it yeah possibly would have he sends it goalward just drifts across the face of the post but that is all we needed what a superb final what a superb victory look at how much it means to St Peter's Catholic High School and again we go back to the first game and moments like this just bring unadulterated joy the unrestricted feeling of just happiness and a sense of achievement and again we said it at the start they managed to do this in front of the school they're going to be walking with a 10 foot tall on Monday walking like heroes I've got the hers on the back of my neck standing up at this moment that is something superb so let's have a look at the second half try lights shall we and again so clever from Joe Hollins again a contender for player of the match consistent well organised his team looked sharp here recognised there was space recognised the markers weren't ready and darted over for the second try well I mean he spun around Travis Morse like he's a spinning revolving door again of course again spoke about him what the course for player of the match today and again we spoke about this numerous times this but excellent I believe from Castleford Academy the margins so short and Hardy picking his way through to go underneath the post we thought that Castleford Academy might hang on they even had this opportunity didn't they to actually so as it was moved wide yeah and, and look winning clearly is important it is clearly something we all enjoy doing if you happen to be on the right side of it but ultimately for a lot of these people it's the start where they're only they're only the start of their journey i hope we'll see a lot of these people progress to enjoy rugby league so this is the no try it's such a clever kick now remember this penalty that came from it came on the 40 meter line so is there some is there someone obstructed in the background i can't see i can't actually see why that's been chalked off I'd be really interested to have a conversation with the match official there about it. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if it's the referee or if it's the touch judge. Touch judge came on, didn't they? But then this to win the game, when you need to come up with a clutch play, you come up with something at the corner. A diving finish from Lincoln Gladwin. Brilliant. Hero on one day. He won't have to buy his school dinner for the rest of the <laughs> term, will he? <laughs> well... Maybe, maybe a day. <laughs> <laughs> what a superb finale to six hours of brilliant schools rugby. If you've been with us from the start, you'll have seen some classic tries. We had a classic finish. Absolutely superb. Yeah, again, I've, I've been lucky, probably like yourself, to see quite a lot of champ schools and that will go up there and there's been many great moments and great games and I think that will go up there with one of them so first of all it's our match officials to go up as they have done after every single final absolutely superb fully deserve their medals these are memories memories that you make aren't they again I know we, we try to as, as from an RFL point we try to have value uh, and I know a recent referee who refereed at the Champ Schools girls finals at Kingston Park got it framed on the wall like you would do an international shirt so it definitely does mean something look and they've all played their part today and again it's part of their professional journey potentially as well so now it's time for our player of the match and he's stood at the back with his hands in his head quite quite get the the emotions out of him clearly disappointed so it's going to be Jacob Hardy hands on head he'll step up and receive his player of the match memento 
and again maybe I might have no, I don't know. Normally, the, the the losing side doesn't have a captain, but how highly I thought of this player today, and I thought he was fantastic. He was very, very composed in everything that he did. It was quality, wasn't it? There's an old head and young shoulders there. And now Castleford Academy, as runners up, will come up to collect their medals. And that's the the joy and beauty in sport. It's it's, it's a margin. It's it's a, a, an inch or whatever it was that they got that call, that try called off, and they're heroes. Uh, but obviously they're feeling dejected now. But hopefully they've got some. Uh, when they when they reflect on this in a couple of days, they they're proud of their achievements. They're proud of what they've done as part of today's game. There's no need for any of these lads to let their heads go down. Absolutely tremendous final, and without doubt they'll be back. They're heroes in their own right, aren't they? they've got here yeah they've got one more chance of it next year and ultimately sometimes when you have a setback it burns inside you it eats at you and it makes you work harder makes you want to write possibly what you think might be wrongs and I have no doubt they'll be competing for this again uh, yeah. next year and a great sportsmanship as well in helping the injured player Pollock to collect his medal we've seen such great examples of it uh, and the sportsmanship that involved is involved in our sport is something that we need to talk so much higher about in my opinion it's, it's brilliant to see yeah I, I am a big fan of sport obviously I've worked in sport been involved in sport in my life and I think it's, it's what sport brings you is the moments of joy it's the moments of learning from your peers and it's a lot of life lessons and lifelong friends so Zach Bailecki will receive his winner's medal shakes the hand of Sue Taylor gets it presented almost Star Wars style over the top of his head and it starts the trend and they'll all get behind that banner knowing that they have triumphed they've claimed an exciting victory so many heroes so much could be written about this game hope you've enjoyed the entertainment and while we're obviously away we've got to, we can't, we've got to thank our sponsors Inspire Sports for helping part for making this happen obviously sporting as well and thanks to our horse Kingston Park who have been fantastic as always uh, obviously Newcastle uh, Thunder do fantastic work in the North East and they've been gracious horse and uh, second year there and it's uh, been another fantastic occasion it certainly has been a fantastic occasion it's one that will live long in my memory it's one that will live long in the memory of these young fellas too possible why I get the chance I want to shout out some of my colleagues uh, at the RFL who are always go above and beyond even though sometimes we might take a little bit of stick and particularly Andrew Murray and Johnny Fowler today who lead our from our education that's delivered this fantastic event and everything lead up to it and we deserve the plaudits because it means so much to them as it does to the rest of the colleagues that we get to create these opportunities and talking about opportunities look at this that one is for the family album it's for the school album it's St Peter's who are victorious at the end of Champion School's final day sponsored by Inspire Sport wonderful wonderful scenes well again I've got to thank you for your company and everybody that's uh, stood alongside me over the past six hours I hope you've really enjoyed it at home we're just watching the St Peter's side go over to the classmates their heroes absolute heroes uh, but again thank you ever so much to everyone that has made this broadcast possible it has been a delight as ever to bring you coverage over the course of the day um, thank you so much no, it's been fantastic I've uh, loved every part of it and hopefully I've uh, not uh uh, but I don't too much with my dulcet tones and we will leave you in the knowledge that St Peter's Catholic High School have lifted the year 10 boys final by 14 points to 12 this is Dave Parkinson signing off for our league and remember you'll be able to join me again tomorrow afternoon when I'll be over at Millen as Millen hosts uh, Oldham St Anne's in the National Conference League please join us then kick off half past two